So when we visualize data, we're plotting the data. And then we need to figure out what we're going to use to represent each piece of data. That piece of data we're going to call a glyph when it's represented visually as part of a data visualization. So as we saw before, charts display data and the choice of chart and the elements of a chart are often dependent on the kinds of data that we want to indicate. We can use glyphs in charts to further display data, uh, either new data or to reinforce existing data. For example, the shapes at the top of a bar chart or the actual shapes of the bars in a bar chart or a Gantt chart um, can change based on the data. In this case, the thickness of the bars can change based on a data value. If we're plotting a line chart or a scatter chart, we can use different values for the data points, different glyphs to represent different values at the data points uh, of, of, a, of yet a third variable. Tables, as we're plotting two nominal values here, two categories, um, and looking at uh, the intersection of those two categories, we can plot yet a third variable uh, based on the shape or other decorations of the um, of the values. So glyphs are are items that indicate data points in a um, in a chart or a data visualization, and they can you know they have other dimensions that they can use to encode other measures. So for example, here is a uh, simulation of a tornado that's part of a presentation visualization at the NCSA. And on the ground we have an array, uh, basically a grid of cones laid out. And these cones uh, are glyphs that are indicating the uh, ground um, wind speed and direction. And so speed is being mapped to the length of the cone, and length is a good uh, a perceptual indicator of, uh, of a quantitative value. And then we have the direction. The wind direction is the, is the orientation of the cone. And ordinarily, we wouldn't care about a direction, any one direction being greater than another, but we're using the differences in wind direction from one cone to another in order to indicate you know, convergence or divergence of the wind. And so uh, we're using perspective here, so we can see some of the details of the cones here in the forefront, and then we can see some textures in the background. And then you can see some color changes in these glyphs. These cones um, are being coded in color. Um, if they're orange, it represents an updraft, and if, it's, um, if they're in blue, then it's a, a downdraft. And so we're getting this... Um, uh, we're using color to indicate, uh, to emphasize a, a directional change in a particularly important direction of up, up or down. And so these glyphs give us the opportunity to encode additional data variables in what would ordinarily be just a two-dimensional uh, chart here on the ground of this three-dimensional visualization. So in terms of our analysis of perceptual effectiveness, we're mapping quantitative values, uh, for example, wind speed and wind direction as length and angle. And direction is a quantitative value because we're looking at the differences between neighboring points quantitatively. We have some nominal values that we're mapping. For example, up, updrafts or downdrafts are being mapped as hue. We're not saying that one is greater than the other, just that they're different categories. Uh, fundamental categories of wind direction, whether the wind's going up or down, and we're mapping that to hue, which is a very effective use of a mapping value to a data value. And then finally, the shape is nominal, and the fact that if I go back to the original slide, um, the actual particles are being mapped with spheres and cylinders, whereas the uh, wind speed on the ground is being mapped with a cone. And so that shape difference is another nominal indication that you're looking at data from ground wind speed versus airborne wind speeds from the particles.